Welcome, I'm Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number three, querying knowledge graphs with Sparkle. In this excursion number four, I want to introduce you to the Wikidata knowledge graph. Like DBpedia, Wikidata also is one of the central hubs in the web and it's becoming popular, more popular every day. So, let's have a look at Wikidata. Wikidata is a collaboratively edited structured data, or some people say knowledge graph, operated by the Wikimedia Foundation, which started in 2012. Collaboratively edited means all of the users can enter new information into that knowledge graph in a structured way. So you enter structured data there and we end up in a huge database, in a huge knowledge graph that can be queried via Sparkle, for example. And it's huge. When we did the last check here in February 2023, it contained more than 101 million entities, more than 10 million persons, about 2.7 million populated places, more than 5 million architectural structures. That's huge, isn't it? 1 million events, <laughs> more than 1 million chemical compounds, 350,000 movies. I even didn't know that such a number of movies existed. 230,000 books, 8 million astronomical objects. It's huge. It has more than 40 billion triples and around 24,000 active users are constantly editing Wikipedia and are increasing its size. So that's a huge thing. Okay, let's have a look on how the uh, Wikidata works. First of all, each of the entities here, for example, George Orwell, they have a separate page on which you can a, access information, but also you can edit information there. The main difference to DBpedia, for example, is the identifier. We have already mentioned it in Wikidata, you have these Q numbers. All of the entities are simply numbered. Entities have a Q number, properties have a P number. So it's P followed by a number. And these numbers are getting large, especially since you see there that we are now talking about more than 100 million entities. So we will later on also talk about uh, benefits or let's say um, disadvantages of this kind of organization. What else do we see? We have here for George Orwell, the identifier, which is the subject, we have a property. So the properties are given here on the right side. So this here would be sex or gender. And then here we have a value. So as far it's the same as we already know it, but there is more information here in Wikidata. And one of the nice things is you can give references for each statement that you introduce here. Each statement might get a reference, which means the source that you are citing, that you are quoting here, they are really referencing that this information might be correct according to a given reference. And you see this also opens up the possibility that you might have several possibilities according to several references that might be possible and they want to list all there as, as alternatives and you should also see where they come from to make your own judgment about that. And there is another thing you have so-called qualifiers and this is of course nice because there you can make statements about statements about here for example the country of citizenship of George Orwell and you can see here yeah it has a start time and an end time and you can even give here the cause of the end and that here would be a succession of states and something like that. You can look deeper into that, but this is quite much information, quite more than you have usually in DBpedia available. And all of that that you see here are the statements that are given here in Wikidata. So simply click on it, play around with it and you see there that's interesting to play with. Of course, Wikidata now also provides a Sparkle endpoint, which means you can do Sparkle queries here on the Wikidata Sparkle endpoint. We will do this excessively later on in the subsequent chapters of that lecture, so I don't click on that, but of course you can click on it. You have here an example query for a Sparkle endpoint. The nice thing, of course, you see here below, the answers are already displayed in form of a table of what we were looking for here. But as soon as you include, for example, a date, you can choose specific visualization, uh, visualizations that are date related. 
So for example, what I can do in Wikidata, I can organize my results according to a timeline as soon as I have given dates for all of my results. And then I can choose from a specific number of visualizations, for example, a timeline visualization. You can also do, let's say, statistical uh, visualizations like bar charts, or you can do graphs and other things which might be really interesting according exactly the purpose of the query that you are doing. So you have a rich choice of visualizations available and that makes here Wikidata really an interesting resource for Sparkle queries. However, beware, Wikidata is not in parentheses a real knowledge base. Why is that so? Wikidata is a wiki-based large structured database that is using RDF. But the available triple store in Sparkle Query Service, as well as the RDF export that we have from Wikidata, is only an addendum. It's usually a content management system that is based on MediaWiki, which has its own database, a relational database. It's usually MariaDB that is, you know, the core of that content management system that you see here. And the content of that MariaDB is usually synchronized with the Sparkle endpoint, but not the other way around. Wikidata is in that sense not fully W3C compliant, that it does not, let's say, um, provide explicit classes and class membership. It has a specific property that in double quotes means the same, but it's not exactly the same so that the reasoner would be able to conclude from it, you know, that a specific member of a class is really available there. So that this is really then of type RDF class, of type OWL class or anything like that. So that kind of vocabulary is not used there as well as explicit subclass relationships via RDFS subclass of or equivalences of specific classes or let's say the equivalence of specific entities. And this makes it difficult to handle. For many things that we are doing that does not or is not taken into account and doesn't matter much, but it's not a true and a real knowledge base, which of course is a pity, but it's better than nothing and you can do a lot with it. So we can do almost everything we can do in Sparkle with it and this is of course uh, a very nice feature that um, we have to use here and we will use it here also for the subsequent demonstrations because the content is much richer than the content in DBpedia and also the means of visualization are much better there. Okay, so much as a starter, in the next section of the lecture we will start with the first complex queries in Sparkle.